a defiant Eric Ten Hag in today's press conference ahead of the game against Liverpool in the FA Cup this weekend. He has poured water on Marcus Rashford leaving Manchester United. At the same time, backing himself and his future at Manchester United. Loads of players coming back from injury as well. He's telling the crowd to be up and be ready for this game this weekend. I'm sorry, Eric. It's Liverpool against United. We're always up for it. We're up for every single game. I think you need to get into your team and tell them to be up for a game. Never mind calling the fans out. Mm, yeah, not having that one. I'm not having that one at all. Let's get into what was said today. Let's look ahead to that game and everything that Tanaga said we've had in players coming back on how we can see this working out. Amongst other news, especially the staff actually panicking a little bit at United all of a sudden. A lot of Eric Tanag's coaching staff is out of contracts at the end of this season and there are no assurances at all that they will be keeping their jobs. What's going on behind the scenes? Decisions need to be made soon and people really do need to be looked after that are at Manchester United and know what their futures hold. This is Revy United TV. I'm Adam. Welcome along to the live stream, everybody. Hope you're doing well. It is Friday. The week is done. Weekend is here. FA Cup weekend is upon us. It is an absolutely behemoth of a game at Old Trafford this weekend for more reasons than one. We talked with Jay last night. We had Andy Tate on today giving his thoughts live outside Old Trafford. Make sure you go and watch them videos back and get their thoughts on this game. Both saying exactly the same thing. A defiant fan base. We think we can actually win this game against Liverpool. Why are we so convinced all of a sudden that we can beat Liverpool? There's so much to talk about today that I need your guys' opinions on. Help me out here, people, in this show. Let me know what you think. Are we confident going into this game? I've looked at a few comments from what's been said on our videos and we have just been shot right down. Apparently, we're going to get dry and we are going to get sent to... <laughs> We're going to get sent back to the cleaners by Liverpool. There's plenty of comments and plenty of opinion on this game. And everything that Ten Hag today has said has sort of... Just, I don't know if it was much of a rallying cry. I think he's inadvertently got the fans pumped by calling us out a little bit. Like, we've seen Pep Guardiola doing this all the time. And Jurgen Klopp does allude to it, but really doesn't need to get the Liverpool fans up. There is 10,000 of them going to be at Old Trafford this weekend for the game. So their atmosphere is going to be bang on the morning. We cannot get drowned out by 10,000 Liverpool fans in our own ground. That is not that is not acceptable. Manchester United fans need to be absolutely on it. We do. We are on it. This team gets the best support that it can possibly get. It's the players that have let us down. One of them players being Marcus Rashford. And obviously speculation has been all over the place recently. We've heard bids from PSG apparently going in. Eric Tenag's response to this in the press conference was, no, forget it, not going anywhere, not even a chance that Marcus Rashford is going. Forget about what the PSG president said about coming in for Rashford this summer at all. That counts for nothing. We're in our United bubble. Rashford's going nowhere. Why the hell would we look to get rid of Marcus Rashford when we only signed him up to a new contract last year? I'm sure Anthony signed the contract last year and... Uh, everyone's looking to get rid of him. I'm sure that's the case. Yeah, but, <laughs> hey, never mind. Uh, <clears throat> well, he signed up the year before, but, yeah, second year in, everyone's looking to flog him on. So, yeah, contracts being signed count for nothing in football. So, Ten Hag's pulling the wool over no one's eyes with that comment. It really isn't. I think the biggest thing to come out of that press conference was <clears throat> Ten Hag just basically rally crying absolutely everyone possible off the back of some good news from the press conference, which was injured players coming back to the fold. And that is very exciting for United fans because we are going to resemble somewhat of a team this weekend. Well, in players playing in positions they should be playing in, that is, anyway. So, yeah, I think we can get excited about actually seeing an organised team, if anything, this weekend against Liverpool. I two fullbacks because one of them players coming back is Aaron Wambazaka. So, yes, uh, we've got plenty to look forward to on that one but guys let me know in terms of uh, him quashing Marcus Rashford I mean we've said all along haven't we I mean I want Rashford gone I'm in that but I'm under no illusion that he is probably still going to be here this summer but just like we said before there's too much to go before but Ten Hag in his defiant message in the press conference saying that there's not a chance that we would just sign a player up on a new contract the way we have done with Marcus and then let him go the summer after. Well, this does happen in football. We know it's quite common. It's not It's not like a player signs a contract, that's it. 
It's like I look at uh, Paulinho at Fulham, just signed a new contract. You're telling me he's not going to go in the summer? If a bid comes in, then he's off. Manchester United are in a strong position with Marcus Rashford if they want to negotiate with anyone because of this contract. And he is still doing bits, which is good, which I said I wanted him to do because we need to get top five and we need to add value to his price tag. Manchester United, going forward, are not going to win the league with Marcus Rashford being our main figure. Can we get into the top four with Marcus Rashford? Yes, we can. I'm not going to shy away from saying that. I don't like him. I don't want him in the team. I've seen enough this season, but we can get to the top four with him. That's stage one. But we need to stay there. Then we need to move on from there and compete. And he has constantly been part of a team that hasn't. It's not just him. It's a lot of other players in this team that have done exactly the same. A season on, a season off. And Ten Hag, he's, he's clinging on to players that he has backed, I feel. Players that have sort of backed him or not gone against him. Well, Rashford has, but he has had to deal with Rashford a different way because of the situation with Sancho uh, and what happened there for me. So, yeah, I think coming out today and just quashing any rumours of Marcus Rashford leaving the football club, I think that was an easy thing for Ten Hag to do. Uh, I, to be honest, I, I think at this stage right now, it's the right thing, to, right thing for him to say. Because nothing can happen now. Nothing can happen in terms of transfers, players going and going out, as we know, because the window's shut. So he needs everyone he possibly can to get on side. Above all else, whether you like Tanag or not, whether you like Marcus Rashford or not, we need to come together and get the best results for this team and get through this season and get into that top five and win the trophy, which is the FA Cup. That's what we need. And I think every single United fan would look at it and go, OK, I can accept that as a season. Everything that's gone on before needs to be put to bed. We move on. We have to. It's a trophy and top five. And Ten Hag keeps his job. It's as simple as that. I've said this all along. In terms of him talking up certain players, it's all in, a, it's all in pure desperation, I feel, to try and cling on to what he's got. I was speaking to a United member of staff today. I'm not going to say who it was, but they have told me that uh, the full plan and everything being organised for this tour is all on. Ten Hag. Ten Hag is going to be here in the summer unless disaster strikes in this next two months. This is Ten Hag's pre-season. Marcus Rashford will be here in the summer. He will be on that tour. What happens past that, I don't know. We really don't know what's going to happen, but they are the sure guarantees definitely unless it just completely falls off a cliff and we get humiliated. We absolutely get humiliated, pummeled by Liverpool, in fact, or don't finish in the top five. That changes everything. But what Manchester United do know and what the staff there do know is they plan as everything is going ahead with the people in position right now. That being the coaching staff, that being every one of the players, everything is organised for what is now. It has to be organised months in advance. And what happens in between then is just... It's just damage. That's what it is. It's collateral damage. And the next person coming in has to carry on from what was organised before. Ten Hag walked into Manchester United in exactly the same situation. A pre-season tour was done, organised and set up. He walked into it. He got hit with a bolt from the blue with how Manchester United tours are. The fact that the tour is not even two weeks long tells you that Ten Hag has organised this. He has got it. Three games, quick fire. In and out, not much travelling. They fly over to LA, then down to San Diego, which is 30 minutes tops in a plane for United, straight back up to LA, and then fly over to South Carolina on the way home. They leave South Carolina that night after the game, head back to Manchester. Quick fire, job done, football, good teams they're playing against, no poxy set-up games or anything like that, good competition, Good pre-season football for Manchester United. There are two European games that are going to be announced before that pre-season tour of USA. So there's going to be five games and possibly one more when the team gets back from, <clears throat> from the USA, which we always have at Old Trafford. Six games. Uh, new members in the house. Uh, Cliff Red 7, uh, Rob Cross. Uh, the, 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 the dart player? Have we got a dart player in the house right now? Uh, Rudresh. Uh, and uh, and Amanda and Amanda Rake and uh, and Andrew Andrew, that's a different way of saying it. Hopefully I've said them right. But five new members, all gifted, 
by that legendary man with the legend on his profile picture, which is Daz Salford69. Thank you, Daz. Guys, welcome to the Members Club. You are more than welcome and absolutely loving you all being here. Make sure you please thank Daz for that. That is very generous, Daz. Love that. I think Daz is getting in the Liverpool United mood right now. People are starting to feel the vibe, I would feel. But yeah, uh, just going back to what I said there, uh, Ten Hag's press conference, he's talking right now like he's a secure man. He's talking like he is getting certain players back, and I think he's just he's having to call. He, he's basically bluffing, I think, Ten Hag. He's calling it out, and anything that happens or goes wrong in the meantime, he'll just deal with. It'll just be what it is. So he sees himself as Manchester United manager, finishing out the next year of his contract, and hopefully a new one gets negotiated in within that time spell because he's doing well. He needs to win a big chunk of games. I haven't got confidence he's going to do that. I've already been through the games with you guys and told you what I thought about certain ones and where we're going to fall and slip up and where we're expected to drop points. Every single one of these games that we've got now, from now until the end of the season, we can 100% win with the players that are coming back. But he's going to need Marcus Rashford. The Belfast Bebe, Alternative United's tag for him. That's what he is. He's now got a nickname. He's now changed in the minds of Manchester United fans. But what we cannot get away from is the fact that Marcus Rashford is going to be part of this run into the end of the season. <clears throat> then we can say what we want uh, about his future and things like that in pre-season. Whether or not anything is going to happen, I don't think it will, like I said. But yeah, we're going to criticise Marcus for his poor performances. We'll cheer him when he scores goals. Right now he's part of the squad and Ten Hag needs him, for God's sake. It's... It's clutching at straws, really, isn't it? With you hoping that Marcus Rashford is going to be the one that actually holds things together uh, for us and gets us through this next group of games, this next dozen games, you could say. But yeah, I, I look at it and I go, Ten Hag feels confident, I feel, because he's got players coming back. I heard Ramsey talking in his interview, was talking about this earlier on, about excuses, about uh, players missing, and this is why Manchester United are where they are right now. It would have been a different season altogether, if we had all of our players. Well, no, it wouldn't have been a different season altogether. It would have been a different season, like I said earlier this morning when we were talking with Andy, it would have been a different season altogether if we'd have beaten Bournemouth at home, if we'd have beaten Fulham at home, if we'd have beaten Crystal Palace at home. We'd have been in the bleeding top four, wouldn't we? So let's not talk about injuries. Let's not talk about players missing and this is why it's gone wrong. Let's talk about games that we should have won anyway and actually be nine points better off. Let's talk about that. There's no excuse to call out injuries at all when it comes to them three teams. No disrespect. You've got to beat them at Old Trafford. I don't care. And if you look into them games and who was missing, we had more than enough players to deal with them games. So I'm not having it that injuries have curtailed and wrecked this season. Everyone's dealt with injuries. United dropped points that they shouldn't have dropped. Because we've walked into games thinking we're just going to walk over teams. We've take, taken teams massively for granted. So, in all of that, Ten Hag today calling out the fans and saying they need to be up for it. They need to get behind the team. We know, Eric. We know what this game is. You don't need to tell us. How about getting your team ready and then calling out the atmosphere and saying that the fans need to be there. You know they're going to be behind the Man United team against Liverpool. We're not going to get outsung by Liverpool fans in our own patch. So, yeah, let's concentrate on what's happening with the team rather than the fans. We'll take care of ourselves and we'll get behind the team. We always do. When we get let down and the players are showing the willing that they have been and it just looks complete dejection, then, yeah, they tend to they lose a little bit of a uh, little bit of a atmosphere. But that's expected when your team's playing absolute dross football. So, yeah, I, I'm just saying... Back in your lane, like the fans know what they're doing. You do what you're doing, organise your team, and then let's see what we can do. Uh, let me get into the chat and see what you guys are saying and all of that that I've just gone into. Ooh, let's have a scroll up and just see what's going on. Uh, Louise K says, uh, oh no, that's talking to someone else. Uh, newbies, uh, he will still be sold in the summer. Ten Hag is trying to hide it because if he say, if you say it's a rumour, it's true. Rashford will stop playing for us. Not a good move. Uh, talk is cheap, Adam. Roddy says, it is cheap. We need some walking. Along with that talking, and we need a win against Liverpool. They have to win this game. 
They have to win this game. Uh, Glenn, I disagree with Ten Hag comments. Rashford will be sold at the end of the season by Sir Jim and he's in charge, not Eric. I don't know. People have said to me it's simply because of the branding and the commercialisation that they can get from Marcus Rashford. He holds a lot of appeal and is a prize asset in that department as well. Will the powers that be stop this from happening if Ten Hag wanted to get rid of Marcus Rashford? I mean, what happens to Marcus if Ten Hag isn't in situ? I think Marcus Rashford definitely stays then because you know the next man coming in is just going to say, I can get some out of Marcus. I'm the one to do it. I believe in myself. I can get more out of this player. <laughs> yeah, you'll see after two years. I think there are people who followed Adam over and that's all good. I'm not sure what that's about. Uh, newbies, I'd love if uh, you're right, mate, that on what did Newbies say? Ah, right, yeah, in terms of selling Rashford. Sorry, misread that one there a little bit. My mistake. Will Man United, uh, would Eric start Spain there for this game? Uh, that guy's hardly played. Only seen him play at Newport. That was it. Well, Bain there is injured. Uh, Will, that was announced today. He has a muscle strain. So one keeper off the bench, one keeper on the bench because he also announced that Mason, uh, not Mason Mount, that Tom Heaton is available, fit, raring to go as well. So... Heaton will be back on the bench more than likely to cover Bain Day. Uh, Bain Day, it has been a complete and utter waste of time for him being at United, hasn't it? He's not going to get a game now from the end, from now until the end of the season. He doesn't stand a chance. So, yeah, real sad situation there. We're never going to know, like a lot of other players. We are just not going to know. People can say that Rashford is the only option we've got and we have to play him. We don't know because other players haven't had a fair crack at a whip. And that is, they're the facts. It's as simple as that. Please make sure you give the video a like, guys. Uh, we already got well over 300 in the room with us right now. Building up to a huge weekend. Let's try and get up to the 100 like mark, everybody, please. I uh, thank you all. Uh, Tim, Tim Garrett says, I honestly would let Rashford leave. He's not happy and he should feel the most blessed lad in Manchester. I hope he goes and enjoys playing somewhere else. A lot of people have said it would be better for him and the player to be fair, and I think that's what everyone wants. He's not going to be happy in a Manchester United. If he's not going to be happy in the Man United shirt, he doesn't look happy in the United shirt. His talk is cheap, like the comments said. He needs to do a lot more on the pitch to convince an awful lot more United fans. Will the real Rob Cross please stand up, says Stu. We have Rob Cross in the house. I don't know if it's a real name, if he's taking it from the dart player. He may have had the name before Rob Cross, the dart player. I don't know. I'm just guessing completely. There is a bit of a chat going on right now in the live chat. Uh, as long as we keep Rashford, we will win nothing. Nice. He is not elite. He is not a superstar and shows both Eric Tanag and United do not and will not learn from their mistakes. Altai, Altai, Altai on Sunday versus Liverpool. Glenn, he's injured. Sorry, mate. I don't want to burst any bubbles, but he won't be playing. He wouldn't have been playing if he was fit. Let's be fair. Newbie says, Adam, can you talk about the likelihood of EPL getting the fifth spot uh, of the Champions League? West Ham eliminated Freiburg yesterday and Brighton secured some points yesterday. EPL currently third uh, uh, in the rank. Yeah, we will get it. We will, like... Uh, Villa smashed Ajax, Liverpool cruised through their game, Freiburg, one of the German teams who is above us in the Coalition League table, they obviously got beat and smashed by West Ham, uh, and I think City and Arsenal, I think Arsenal can beat Bayern, honestly, I think they can, I think once that happens, that's, you, that's England moving well ahead of, uh, well ahead of Germany in the Coalition for me. I think City will beat Real Madrid. I think uh, Arsenal will beat Bayern. They're my bets on that. And I feel like Liverpool and West Ham will go deep into the Europa League as well as Aston Villa. I think Aston Villa will win the Europa Conference. I do. I think they will win it. And that will be massive points uh, for for the English clubs. So fifth place is definitely up for grabs. There's, there's no, there's only Brighton who fell out at this stage for the English clubs. Everyone else is looking really strong with some massive results. So yeah, it's looking good. Uh, we are going to be chasing.
personally, I think we're going to be chasing Villa. And Villa, with their eyes on that trophy, could they be the ones that slip up? I still think it is too much for United to catch Villa. I do. I think we've got too much to do. And I think Manchester United, I've got too many tough games themselves. I'm not saying we can't do it. I really am. I'm not saying that. But I just look at the way we're playing. I just don't see it. I want to be wholly convinced that it isn't going to be the case. And we can turn up. We can turn up. We can beat everyone in these games that we're actually in. I know we can. I'm worried about Liverpool and Arsenal in the league at home. Every other game, it's a total 50-50. Depends what United turn up. In all of the games, we haven't got good records in them particular grounds, especially away from home. Uh, Brentford, Palace, Chelsea, Bournemouth and Brighton. Bournemouth, probably the best bet in terms of previous form. But the others, nah, not not like, it's not good hunting grounds. Let's aim uh, at Rashford. If he doesn't uh, do a good performance, uh, do not let us down Marcus. Uh, we're not downing Marcus. We're just stating facts. He has been piss poor, like a lot of the rest of the team has. I think Bruno Fernandes has been poor this season. Marcus Rashford has been poor. Uh, Anthony has been shocking. I think some of the defenders have been diabolical. The keeper's been poor at times. Casemiro's had a shock of a start of a season. He's pulled it back a little bit now, but yeah, no, we've just spades a spade, mate. He's been crap. If he, pour, if he performs well, he gets praise, like every player, but he's not been. Uh, Two-Face said, won't uh, play Ronaldo because he don't trap back. What the F does Rashford do apart from uh, for his round, uh, for, uh, for his my round? <laughs> yeah, I, I know, I know, I mean... The Ronaldo, I'm not even bringing Ronaldo into this conversation anymore. This is all about Marcus. Like, he needs to perform. If he performs well, he'll get the praise he deserves. That's it. This is all it is right now. I'm putting my, I won't call it hatred. I'm putting my sort of Marcus Rashford opinion on what I think Manchester United need to do moving forward to the summer. It doesn't matter what happens with Marcus Rashford uh, from now until the summertime, apart from what he does on the pitch. It really doesn't. I can't see him making another mistake from now until the end of the season off the pitch. That would just be absolutely taking the piss. It really would. And he's not going to do that. He needs to just perform. He needs to be tearing Liverpool a new one. He needs to be running at players and scaring players in that Liverpool defence. Like, if Rasmus Hoyland is going to get bombarded by the likes of Virgil van Dijk and double teamed and made sure that they try and nullify that threat that is Rasmus Hoyland, then... Rashford has to step up and cover that. He has to be the one that takes advantage of everyone looking at Rasmus. That's what he has to do. Super chat in from Tom Toms. Uh, we just keep repeating the same old shite. It's so frustrating. So much for a clear out. Rashford and Martial need to get out of our club. Well, one of them is definitely going, Tom Toms. It's no definite on Marcus, but our Mr. Anthony Martial will be long gone from this football club. Long gone uh, by the end of the season. Happy Hibby. Welcome to the Members Club, my friends. Our sixth member of the show. Thank you so much, Happy. Hope you're doing well. Do get involved. Guys, we have got no watch along this weekend. We've got a weekend off. I'm back for the England and Brazil game on T4 next week. And then we're probably looking ahead to the Brentford game at the end of the season. So, members, be tuned in for them ones. Three likes away from the 100, guys. Please do give the video a like. Get on it right now. Thank you. It's important. It helps the channel. And we are... Let's see. If we get 250 likes, 200 likes in this video, then we United are going to beat Liverpool. So it's up to you. You can dictate what's going to happen this weekend right now, guys. Andrew says, Highly unlikely we will grab a Champions League spot. There would have to be a massive turnaround in our performances. Well, yeah, you're right. You're right. Uh, we need to win at least eight of the last ten games, in my opinion. Uh, that would put us on what? Uh, around about 71 points, I think, if my calculations are right. If we win another eight games now. So, just about getting in. 70 usually gets you into the top four. I think a minimum seven, maybe a draw, a couple of defeats. United might scrape in. 
But anything less than that, I think it's just going to come up short. And like we said, it's like we've got some tough games. We really have. But like I said, going into this international break now, we talked about this with Andy earlier on. We said these players are going to have the perfect excuse just to slip away and forget about what's happened against Liverpool because it's international break. How about you just win the game and give the United fans a nice victory to sit on for two weeks, then looking forward to coming back to playing Brentford at the end of March. Why don't you do that, United? Why don't you give us something? I mean, guys, honestly, in the chat right now, just let me know how confident I can this team do it. Have you got belief? Like Tenag says, he says Tenag in the press conference today that this team is ready. I can feel it. They look ready. No, no, Eric. Wrong way to say it. It's like, we're ready. We are ready, and we're going to give absolutely everything in this game. That's what you need to be saying. We are 100% prepared. He said we've had a good week, to give him his due. A very good week, because we've got Mason Mount, Tom Heaton, Harry Maguire, and Ramba Zaka, and the man himself, Rasmus Hoyland, all back fit. Five players Four of which have big impacts on the first team, all back ready for the Liverpool game. This is freaking huge for Manchester United. It is, because it gives us the best chance. The biggest one, like, I've said it before, like, Rasmus Island is huge for being back because we've got a focal point again. But Aaron wan is going to give us a lot coming back into this team. He really is. Uh, Ancelotti has devised another plan to beat Guardiola this time, Adam. Hopefully, Raja, I hope he's right. Uh, correct, Adam, says Stephanie. 47 plus 24 equals 71. Wow, I've even impressed myself with them numbers. I think even Kaz will be proud of me for that one. Crap at maths, by the way. Absolutely shocking at maths. Uh, but I think I've done all right with that there. I'm quite chuffed with myself. There's the win for tonight. Anyway... Uh, Cliff Red 7 says, I'm procrastinating. <laughs> I should be working. Ha ha. Hey, mate, no one likes to work on a Friday night. You've got my permission to ditch, skive, bunk, do whatever you want to do, mate. I think it's right. You just need to tell your bosses, look, it's Liverpool v United this weekend. Nothing else matters. Nothing else matters. I only got together with mine five years ago. That's a total different private subject. Don't know what's going on there in the chats. I should have maybe looked ahead before I read that one out. Uh, what else have we got? Cliffy's back again. He says, what players will turn up on Sunday? With a big question mark. Can't wait to see. Mentally, I mean. Yep, you did write about that. Uh, ready against Fulham or ready against City? I know, MDR Samurai. I'm trying to be positive, but I know what you're saying. I do, I do. Uh, hopefully, we can be completely blown away by a team that actually wants to turn up. That's what we need. We need a Man United side turning up and going, F you, Liverpool. F you. We are going to take you out. We need a Martinez right in the back of Salah. There you go. Someone needs to step up, set the stall out early, get through the back. Don't get sent off, but you know what I mean? Make yourself known. That's what I would be doing in this game. It's like, I am going to be on your ass for 90 minutes. I am going to be all over you like a rash. That's what the attitude should be. It should be just like ready to go. That's what this United team needs. You know what? We're playing shit. It doesn't matter. We've beaten Liverpool before when we were on our asses last season. 2-1. Absolutely mullered them. Battered them. And I don't mean quality of football. I just mean we were up for it energetic, at, matched them all over the pitch. All over the pitch we matched them. And that's what got us that goal. That's what got us that game. Uh, I did want to talk about... Uh, someone has just sent me... Kaz just sent me a, a tweet now regarding the staffing situation at United. I want to touch on that. I did say that at the start. But uh, some of Eric Tanag's coaching uh, coaches, including Benny McCarthy, will be out of contract in June and have been seeking assurances over their future at Manchester United. Uh, that's come in a few different media sources, the first one being the mail. Uh, and again, this is like the uncertainty of what's going on right now at United. I just think they're just holding their cards close to the chest, Ineos. They're not jumping. They're just waiting it out to see. If Ten Hag gets United through this season, I think... He's got half a chance of staying if he wins the FA Cup. 
he is three wins away from keeping his job. This game, the semi, obviously, in the final. Of City's in the way, and that's a big, big problem. But with players coming back, can Manchester United compete with Manchester City? If everyone is fit, we've got a chance. We have got a chance against City. I believe that. I really do believe that. They have to find form as well. I'm not forgetting what these players are and what they've put us through this season. They have to find something within themselves and prove that they are Manchester United players for that one game at least. Ten Hag then keeps his job. And then we look to completely rebuilding under Ten Hag and the new Ineos structure. What that means, how that goes, I do not know. But unless, like you said, like I said before, a big manager comes in that can really tell me that that is a he's going to be better for Manchester United than what Ten Hag is right now. Not your Deserbies, your Potters, your Southgates, none of them. That's just going to be no good right now for United. I feel at this stage. It needs to be, honestly, the only man that would convince me that we are moving forward, like Ancelotti is just a, a myth, like a one-off. Like You'd look at that and go, yeah, I would definitely take Ancelotti. I mean, it's brilliant, but half of me still wants to get that next best manager. Like the Mourinho that was coming through, the Klopp that was coming through, that's Nagelsmann for me. That's the one that would get me excited about coming to United. That's the manager that I would say is definitely going to take United in a, co- a whole new direction, but... If it's not any of them, then we have to try and make it work with Ten Hag somehow and see what he's like with Ineos behind him. Interesting, it really is. But the staffing situation and not knowing what's happened with the manager, I think this is why the coaching staff haven't been giving me assurances because Ineos don't have a clue what they're doing with Ten Hag yet. They have to see it out. They're going to have to see it out. They'll have their they'll have their favourites. They'll have their short list of managers, I'm sure. There will be other managers being sounded out, looked into and and being assessed by United. There has to be. There has to be a plan B right now. But Ten Hag will get the opportunity, I feel, unless, like I said at the start of this show, the absolute meltdown catastrophe hits, which is Manchester United getting pummeled by Liverpool and then coming back from the international break and losing to Brentford. This is what gets Ten Hag to sack these next two games. If he wins these next two games, expect him to be there all the way through to the end because the semi-final of the FA Cup, what's that? That's like mid-April. You're pretty much right at the end anyway then. So FA Cup to play for, top five to try and hit. We've still got a chance. It's all in our hands. Until it's out of our hands, I feel like Ten Hag is safe. I do. Uh, Brian Duffy has donated a membership, which has gone to Rajat. Welcome, Rajat. You deserve that, my man. Always in the chat with great comments, as always. And thank you, Brian. Rajat, make sure you do thank Brian. Uh, uh, that would be very much appreciated. Maybe five at the back. Aaron Bazaka for Ram Maguire, Lindelof, Delo. I don't want Lindelof in the team. Stay away. No, thank you. I wouldn't go five at the back. We'd need to win the game. We do. I think we're happy with four. We held off Liverpool at Anfield when we were t- just as bad as what we were, if not if not worse than what we are right now. And we can do it again. We know we can. That 7-0 needs to be the energy that these players use to go into this game. This needs to be what these players' mindset is. It's like, this is not happening. If I was going to turn my career around at this football club. I would be going into this game thinking about that 7-0, the humiliation, the fact that there was no Man United fans hardly there in that stand at the end of the game applauding the players. Think of that humiliation, channel it, and take that into the game at Old Trafford on Sunday. That's what these players need to do. Forget about calling out the fans. The fans are there. We're there every single week. Don't worry about us. It's up to you to harness that atmosphere and work with that memory of being smashed and go out there and take the game to Liverpool and win it. That's what you need to do. We can't... I mean, I say take the game to them. Now. I mean it in the fight, basically, because tactically they will tear us apart, obviously. If we go gun ho and try to attack Liverpool, just like willy-nilly attacking, like hit and hope freestyle football, then 
we're going to get taken out completely by Liverpool. And they'll do it with ease as well. What I mean is you need to be up for the fight. You need to be clued on you to be tracking back, chasing every single ball, fighting for every single ball. If one if one Man United player is seen or looked on by the fans as to not putting it all in, knowing that you've got an international break coming up, then you are dead with this fan base. You cannot afford to do this in this game. You cannot afford to do that. Uh, going down the pub, have a good evening, guys. Leo, have a pint on me, my man. Get yourself comfortable. Enjoy your weekend, buddy. Really appreciate you being in the chat and letting us know that you're all that you're going you're going for a drink, and we're all sat here at home. But yeah, have a good night, mate. <laughs> MUFC Realist TV, ten games uh, to play. Ten is the name of the manager. Ten is Rashford's number. Add that up, thirty points. Let's go. Simple as that, hey. Simple as that. If only it worked that way. If only it worked that way. Daz Salford says. Uh, the stink in the same in that dressing room, lingering for years, needs some Febreze. Febreze would be a clean sweep, mate, I would say. That's what I would call it. Uh, you want to win, then sit Bruno, Rash, McTominay and start Ahmad, Eriksson and Amrabat. Adam, I'm sorry, I completely disagree with you, mate. Amrabat, this is not a game for him. McTominay, uh, yeah, he doesn't start. Bruno has to start. Rashford will start, although I would play Anthony ahead of Rashford in this game, simply because I know he's going to work harder. I do, and I think if you play, if you just just play, he's not going to do it, he isn't. But if you played Anthony on the left, Garnaccio on the right, both of these players are going to put crosses into the box, and there is Rasmus Hyland. That's the way that you need to go. That's how I would play it. Rashford off the bench with a tired Liverpool team, I think he's a different kettle of fish. A good half an hour of Marcus Rashford's. I would take a good half an hour than a piss poor average 60 minutes. Put him on the bench. Say to him, look, you're on the bench for this big game because your performances haven't been up to scratch. When you get your chance, which you will get in the second half, show me that you belong in the starting lineup. It's, it's some, sometimes football is simple, isn't it? It is. That, that's, that message would hurt any player. And then everyone would know. If Rashford didn't come back on, didn't come back onto the pitch in that sec uh, in that second half as a sub and put it in, then everyone would see right through him again. Like he just feels like he's been outdone to because he's not on the pitch. He feels he's got the Sancho syndrome going on right now. That's what it would be. I think that you would definitely find out who wants to be part of this team after you sit him on the bench. Hopefully he falls asleep on the bench uh, and we won't have to bring him on, <laughs> says Stu. Uh, they are dead men walking. Oh, thanks, Mel. Uh, Rashford, Bruno, McTominay, Shaw, Maguire, all will stay, says A7K. Uh, the Muppet Show, would you consider a diamond of Casemiro, Mena, Bruno and Mount with two up top in Garnacho and Rasmus? We're up for all options, but... The problem we've got is we know the manager that we've got in that dugout isn't going to do that. He really isn't going to do that. Uh, Adam, you know that Eric Ten Hag is going to, uh, what Ten Hag is going to do. Uh, none of this. He's going to put out the same team and give another delusional presser afterwards. I hope you're wrong, MDR Samurai, I do, but I have a feeling that you might be right again. <laughs> Rashford will do sod all. He'll bottle any opportunity to skin a defender. Uh, says Tontine, Tontine. Uh, Nathan, Adam, uh, we'd all take a good half hour from the whole squad. <laughs> See, this is when I start talking about things like this. Everyone's like, it just brings everyone out into where they're at and where they feel about this football team at the moment. It is one of just giving up. That's how it feels. Like, just talking to you guys, it's like, you are waiting for this team to slap you across the face and wake you up. That's what it feels like. I'm the same. I am. I'm the same. We just don't believe in them because of what we've seen this season. We really don't. And I look at it and I go, the players that are now available, the big two are Aaron Wambazaka and Rasmus Hoyland. They add a lot more steel to this team. We've got the battling aspect and the player that can hold up and be an out ball for us like we didn't have against City in Rasmus Hoyland. 
And we've got an out-and-out defender, which we are going to need desperately, especially on one-on-one defending in Aaron Wambizaka. I feel so much better knowing that Wambizaka could be on the right-hand side dealing with Diaz than having Dallo there and then no one on the left-hand side. Because let's be honest, if it's Lindelof against Salah, it's good night Vienna, Manchester United, potless this this season. I, that's how strongly I feel about that. You know it. Varane on Varane Evans, Varane Maguire on uh, Nunes in the middle. I think we can handle that just. He is a handful, I mean, don't get me wrong, but I think Varane is good competition there. I'm happy with that matchup. I'd be happy with Dallo on Salov. Not ideal. But still, I think Dallow has proved at left-back this season in some good performances. If he can keep Saka quiet, playing at left-back against Arsenal at the Emirates, he can definitely do a job on Salah, who is just finding his feet again from injury. And then Diaz with wan then you've just got to handle that midfield. And I think our midfield, if we're willing to put the energy and the levels in, Casemiro, Bruno and Mainu, we have a couple of options off the bench in... Ericsson and McTominay, whichever way you want to do it, even Amrabat, we've got more than enough to compete. And then the forward line, like I said, we cannot afford to be playing with 10 men. That's my problem with Marcus Rashford in this. That's what I think. So, yeah, that that's where I'm at with it. That's how I see the game going. And that's what I feel will happen. I mean, United need to be 11 men absolutely on it beyond on it is what I would say but yeah that that's just how I see it we are going to be outside early doors outside Old Trafford if you guys want to come and say hello I know there have been a lot of people asking uh, people, a lot of people going to the game this weekend a lot of people flying over as well so make sure you do come over and say hi uh, we met a fan earlier on today he was over from Denmark Marcus uh, pleasure meeting you, my uh, my man, and hopefully you do come over and see us after the game. So we are just to the right hand side of the Trinity statue as you look at the stadium, uh, just near the Bollards uh, there. So yeah, come and say hello. Uh, we will be there for a bit of time after the game, obviously filming, and we will see you all uh, outside. Hopefully, if you are going to the game. The only thing that will stop us being uh, the hotel football side of the Trinity will be gales and heavy rain. That won't stop us either, Graham. It won't. You can hold the brolly up if you want, mate. Uh, Tim Garrett says, how do you see the game going? Sorry, my internet dropped out. I just said then, uh, I, I think we can be competitive with the players that we've got available. I do. I think we can handle their uh, midfield. I think we've got enough in there. I think we've got enough now in defence. Uh, with whether it be Evans and Varane, Maguire and Varane, Wambazaka one side, Delo the other. We've got enough there. I think their energy levels need matching. That's all it is. And Marcus Rashford needs to play. We can't be having him mopesing around. He needs to put a shift in because we need all 11 players on the pitch. Guys, please give the video a like. We're just coming to the close of play. Uh, please, let's get over that 150 mark. It would be much appreciated. And we are closing out the week, guys. Almost done, and the game is almost upon us. Uh, Rashford shirts in Turkey are free, says Christopher. Last chance to get all of your comments in, guys, as well, please. Get on it now. Let me just see what else we've got. Uh, a few more people coming in just now. Uh, the pigeons will stop you, Adam, says Christopher. They were there in force today, mate. Honestly, they, they had an army. There was an army of them there, like all hovering around the chips. All hovering around the chips and the hot dogs uh, today. Like sat on the roof of the hot dog stand they was. Uh, just to the side of us. Like just vultures ready to go. Boom. That's what United should be like. Like that, ready to pounce. Ready to go. Uh, let me see what else we've got before we finish up. Ah, man, I'm going to have to go some work now. I'm going to do some work now. Cliff, have a good one, buddy. Don't work too hard, my friend. No work rate on the pitch, but work rate on their Instagram and free benefits. Oh, Melly's going in deep on this. She's not happy at all. Uh, Gabrielle is in the chat. We cannot carry players in the modern game. No, you cannot. Spider alert says, Graham, Adam runs for cover when it rains. True story. No, it doesn't. Look back on my vlogs. Graham's nowhere to be seen when there's a rainy day. Uh, whereas me, I'm there. 
even holding my own camera because no one hold it for me because they're getting wet. Uh, lies, people, again. <laughs> uh, MDR Samurai, thank you so much, my man. Super chat right at the end of the show. Adam, outside of Liverpool and Arsenal, do you honestly think we can beat everyone else until the end of the season? I think we can, but I also think we can get beat by them as well. I said it before, mate. I think it is full on 50-50 every single game. I don't fancy any of the away games at all through past experience. I've been to all of them grounds. I've lost at all of them grounds watching United. I've also seen wins at them grounds as well. Well, no, I've not seen one at Brighton. I've not. I've seen us lose and win at Bournemouth. Same. Actually, I've not seen us... I've been to Palace twice. It was a draw and a defeat. Chelsea, win. Defeat, draw. Yeah, two draws, actually, I think. Uh, there, Brentford, say no more, win and lose. And it was the last one. It was the last one, Brighton, Palace, Chelsea. No, that's it. They're the worrying ones. United Old Trafford can take anyone down. I am worried a bit about Arsenal, though, uh, MDR. I am. I'm worried about Arsenal right now. Uh, Red G has been a member for a month on Mad Red 2. Thank you so much, my man. Have a good weekend, Adam and Kaz, and let's hope for a win on Sunday. Absolutely, mate. 100% agree. Graham, you know I'm right. Settle down. I'll see you on Sunday, my man. Well, we are back tomorrow. There is another day in between the con in, in between the game, guys. So, obviously, we will be back tomorrow as well with more content as usual. But until then, everybody, have a great evening. Enjoy your rest of your Friday evening. And get ready for what is going to be an absolutely epic weekend, hopefully. Thank you for all your likes. Loads of new members and super chats tonight. Absolutely brilliant show, guys. Loved it as always. But for now, that is us done and dusted. I will see you all over the weekend. Please give the video a like on your way out. Subscribe if you're tuning in for the first time. Scan our QR code, bottom right hand corner there. Drop in the description if you can't. It is Sofa Score, the best football app out there. The best in the business, guys. Trust me on that. You will not be disappointed. It is free, so get on it and get that done. Thank you guys for watching. We'll see you all over the weekend.